Clubbers, how you doing? Commander Johnny here. Hope everyone's doing great. Um, we're quickly approaching the end of Awana. We only have a couple of more weeks left. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, subject or idea of grace, incredibly important doctrine and teaching. As a matter of fact, um, if, if we don't have grace, then we're in a big world of hurt and we're in trouble. So thank God for God's grace. Last week, we spent a good bit of time talking about grace. We need grace to be transformed. If we're to be an imitator of Christ, if we're to follow Him, if we're to be like Him, uh, we need God's grace to really change us from the inside. Change our thinking, change the way we speak, change our actions change the way we treat other people, etc. And so we spent a good bit of time last week talking about that. This week, we're gonna talk about grace in action. And let me just read our verse uh, for the week and then we'll jump right into it. Uh, reading from Galatians chapter six, verse nine, and let us not grow weary of doing good. Keep on keeping on, don't get tired of it, keep doing it. So. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. Due season just simply means in God's timing. If we do not give up, never quit. Never, 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 ever quit. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to who? Everyone. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. So the question is, is it... Let's say we've trusted in Christ. He's our savior. We simply believed in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to take care of all of our sin. Um, what do we do next? Is it, are we on easy street? Should we coast? Is there any uh, responsibilities uh, that we have? Is it worth serving the Lord? And the answer is absolutely yes. Paul here tells us, Absolutely, yes. Listen to what it, uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58, a favorite verse of mine. It says, therefore, so there's this conclusion, my beloved brethren, talking to believers, those that have trusted in Christ, be steadfast, basically, don't quit, immovable, don't be shifted around, stay focused, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that in the Lord, your labor, what you do for him, is not in vain. What does that mean, not in vain? Well, vain means it was useless or you didn't achieve anything. And what this is saying is your labor is not useless. It's, it did achieve great things. So it's absolutely worth serving the Lord and we should serve the Lord. What I love um, is, is Peter. Um, he asked the question, maybe because I relate to Peter in a lot of ways. He asked the question in Matthew 19, 27 about this idea of serving God. Basically, what do I get? Listen to what Peter said. Then Peter responded to him. He's talking to, Peter's talking to Jesus. And he's saying, see, we have left everything and we followed you. So he's talking to Jesus and here's what he says. So what will there be for us? Basically, Peter's saying, what do I get? And you know, as Christians, sometimes we have a hard time talking about rewards. Uh, frankly, I think it's um, maybe a little bit of false humility, uh, but God, the Bible has a lot to say about rewards. Jesus has a lot to say about rewards. Uh, listen to his response in, in uh, verse 29, right after Peter asked this question. So Peter basically said, what do I get? And here's what Jesus said. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields or businesses, if you will, because of my name. In other words, if you've sacrificed things to serve the Lord, including family members, that person will receive a hundred times more and of course will inherit eternal life. So we don't work to get eternal life. By faith, when we trust in Him, we receive forgiveness of sins, we become a child of God, we're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, we're born again, that happens at the moment of belief. 
But then afterwards, we have another choice to make. Are we going to follow him? Are we going to serve him? Are we going to learn from him? Are we going to renew our thinking? Those are choices that we have to make. And that's what Paul was saying. Be immovable. Be steadfast. Don't ever quit. Keep moving forward. And what happens when we serve the Lord? Jesus said a hundred times more you're going to receive. And sometimes, again, it's hard for Christians to just accept that. Um, I am looking forward to the rewards that I'm going to get in heaven. And the flip side is there might be a little bit of regret one day where I know if I had worked a little bit harder or done a little bit more, uh, maybe there would have been more rewards. So I believe there's going to be a little bit of that regret that uh, we're going to see um, down the road. So. Um, how does this relate? What, what do we do with this information? You know, how does this relate to me? Well, each of us have three things, at least three things that we can offer, but I kind of, you know, categorized them in three. And I've heard this, we've all heard this teaching, I'm sure, before. We have time, we have talents or gifts, and then we have treasure here in this lifetime. So each of us, as it relates to time, have the same amount of time. We have 24 hours. Uh, each day and we have in se and we have seven days in a week. So one of the things that we ought to do to serve the Lord is be faithful with our time. Our, is it all about us? Is it all about um, maybe something like a hobby? Um, there's nothing wrong with having joy and pleasure. God gives us those things. But if that's all we do, then maybe we're not being the best steward of our time. So are you putting forth time for the Lord? Do you read your Bible? Do you uh, do kind things to others? Uh, God has works for you to do. Um, have you asked him, Lord, what do you want me to do? If you do, watch out, because he'll tell you. So are you faithful with your time? How about your talent? You know, the scriptures talk about each of us at least being gifted with one thing, many of us multiple things. And God has given us these gifts or these talents. Some of us can sing, some of us can teach, some of us have the gift of giving. Some of us have gifts of certain, many, many different types of gifting. The question is, do you know what yours are and are you being faithful to use them? Because uh, God's gonna hold us accountable to the talents that he's given us. Even if it's just one little talent, to, which we're, we're gonna learn about that story here in a moment. Um, even if it's just one gifting, are you being faithful with it? And then last but not least, our treasure. And certainly treasure could be money, but are you, I think the main thing is, are you generous with your possessions? Whether you have a little bit like the, the widows might, remember when she gave, and really all she had was a tiny bit. Uh, and then there were others that had a lot of money and they hardly gave anything. So I don't think it's the amount that God is worried about, it's the heart attitude. Are you a cheerful giver? And so uh, those things are ways we can serve the Lord through our time, through the giftings or talents that we have, and certainly through our treasure, the possessions, whether it's money um, or uh, whatever it may be, or are we generous with our treasure, the things that we have here uh, in this lifetime? Well, who should be the object of our time, talent, and treasure? According to our verse, it says we're to do good for everyone. So everyone means everyone around us. But also there's a special group of people that the scripture talks about, especially to believers, the household of faith. So that, that's in essence what our verse is talking about, um, is doing grace in action, doing good for others to all men, but especially to those that are of the household of faith. Um, we're not going to dive into it deeply, but um, we may have all heard about the parable of the talents out of uh, Matthew chapter 25. Uh, but long and short is uh, there were um, a, a man who was going away on a journey and he called his entrusted servants and said, Hey, take care of things while I'm gone. And to one servant, he gave five talents. To another, he gave two. To another, uh, he gave one, according to their ability, is, the, is what the verse says. 
He goes away and the one who had five talents reproduced another five, the one who had two reproduced another two talents, and the one who only had the one talent basically was not faithful and he hid it and buried it and um, the, the man came back and basically said, I'm gonna settle the accounts, let's see what you've done. And of course, the one that uh, had reproduced another five, he said, well done. The one that reproduced two, he said, well done. But the one who basically took the one talent and didn't utilize it, he said, you wicked and slothful servant. That was his commentary. Uh, not because he only had one talent, but because he didn't do anything with the one talent that he had. What a sad commentary. Hopefully that's not us. Whatever bits of time, talent, or treasure that you have, we need to be like these other two servants, the one with five or the one that had two, and we were faithful with it. We gave back to the Lord. We used our time wisely. We were generous to others. We were kind to others. We told others about the gospel. And on and on and on it goes is that is the what that, that is what grace in action means, which is the title of our um, lesson tonight. So I hope this strikes a, a chord with you. Hopefully um, the Holy Spirit is kind of teaching you something tonight. Um, God wants us not only to have grace with our words, but also in what we do. And that's kind of, uh, kind of what tonight's lesson is all about. Clovers, good catching up with you. See you next time, God willing. Take care.